On December 27th, 2014, Honda guys worldwide rejoiced as Honda announced the return of the brand's most iconic model, the NSX. Since 2016, the second gen of Honda's flagship model has had a successful but controversial life. The hybrid all-wheel drive layout made it seem like a far cry from the pop-up generation, but it still carried the same Ferrari fighting performance and everyday drivability that has become a staple to the NSX. And now with the Type S on its way next year, the second gen is in its twilight phase with production seizing in 2022. And fans are scared. Knowing history, we don't want to wait another 10 years before we see the NSX again. But as anyone from Honda's factory would know, that wait was long from intentional. This is the story of a Honda that could have had a V10, a car with the performance and power to take the crown as the Japanese king of the Nord's life. And how while it was never made, it could still be seen on track for over three years. This is Premium Heritage, I'm Jackson Lambros, and this is the story of the NSX that never was. We're gonna take it back to 2005. Revenge of the Sith was out. This is where the fun begins. Kanye wasn't saying she's a gold digger. And the first video was posted on a little website called YouTube. On November 30th, the final NSX rolled off after the first NA1 did 15 years prior. Even with a facelift and yearly updates, the original chassis just couldn't keep up to date with the ever-changing emission and safety standards worldwide. So it was time for the world to say goodbye to the first generation NSX. But almost immediately after the second generation NA2 ceased production, Honda planned for a new NSX to be released in 2010. They went back to the drawing board almost instantly to think up of what it could be. Trying to keep up with modern supercar technology, the company instantly wanted a high-performance supercar based on the lessons learned on the last 15 years in the old generation while utilizing technology from their time-making engines in Formula One. And the result was the Acura Advanced Sports Car, or the ASC for short. This hard model concept debuted at the 2007 Detroit Auto Show and clearly presented the looks and performance of the NSX, but unlike the NSX originally, the engine wouldn't be behind the driver. While the new V10 definitely raised eyebrows, the ASC controversially had it in front of the driver, which was a far cry from the original NSX. Add that with the massive weight of this thing, and it was looking less like an NSX replacement and more like a Acura GT. And I mean, it's true. I mean, look at the size of this lad. Could Acura have sold this as an all-electric rival to the Karma? Absolutely. But is this the car worthy to fill the NSX? I don't think so. The chunky ASC concept had the community in panic, but the following year, a front-engined Honda sports car could be seen tearing up the Nürburgring. It's hard to tell the specifics on the design because of the spy shot camo, but we can clearly see the resemblance from the ASC prototype. And the good news is it certainly looks like it lost some weight in the process. Sound-wise, it's hard to tell if it's either a high-revving V8 or a V10, but regardless, holy hell, it sounds good. So not only did Honda have a prototype now, but they had a purpose as well, as the Honda CEO aimed for this new car to outpace the Nissan GTR, a car that was recently hyped for beating supercars at the Nürburgring, alongside Lexus's up-and-coming LFA. That means that this thing had to potentially go sub 730 around the Nürburgring, which is absolutely insane. With the SH all-wheel drive system mated to the V10 and making a ballpark of 500 horsepower, the next NSX was looking like it was destined to be an absolute beast and actually worthy of filling in the shoes of its predecessor. And then the global recession happened. Can't look at it after you buy it, it's so horrible. But, but, With the financial crisis of 2008 making money tight for Honda, uh, the decision ultimately came to cancel the project and for Honda to focus on hybrid and future technology. And with that, the car was dead and the only time we would ever see it in person was under camo with the Nürburgring. And while the production model of this was gone, Honda was about to find an insane brand new purpose for it. Enter Super GT, Japan's native sports car series in which Honda had been racing the first generation NSX almost four years after its death. However, reg changes in the series required all top class cars to use a front engine layout starting with the 2010 season, and this instantly made the old NSX unusable. Honda suddenly needed a front engine car to run the series, and oh man, if only there was like some kind of front engine supercar that like Honda had been working on for like the past five years, God. Naturally, Honda based the new model off of the front engine NSX, but to make it happen, they bent the rules, kinda. 
Super GT requires that all cars racing be production models, but this naturally was an instant issue since not a single version of this new car was ever built. But Honda was far enough into development for this to be considered as a production ready model. Considering this and also not wanting one of the big three manufacturers to drop out of the series, Super GT allowed it. And with that, the Honda HSV 010 GT was born. God, that's a mouthful, but it is worth it. Short for Honda Sports Velocity, I don't know what that's supposed to signify, but whatever. This is to date one of the only GT racers built off of a never built road car. Instead of the V10 plan for the production model, Honda opted for a three and a half liter V8 pulled from a Formula Nippon car. And holy shit, the result is one of the best sounding GT cars of all time. Roll sound. The same year the road car was scheduled to launch, the Honda HSV made its racing debut in the 2010 Super GT season, coming out with a bang, winning the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship that year. For the next handful of years, the HSV would continue to be a competitive concept. In a moment of bittersweetness, it would actually win its final race at the 2013 season closer at Fuji, and the following seasons would have Honda teams running a concept variant of the NSX we know today. And with that, the story of Honda's HSV and the NSX that never was comes to a close. But who knows, maybe one day Honda will finally rip the covers off and show us what they had in store for us. So many manufacturers these days brand their cars as being born on the racetrack, but built for the road, but this is literally all the HSV ever knew. Despite its concept controversy and the road model never coming to fruition, the HSV ultimately became a success because it did exactly what Honda wanted, winning races and looking damn good doing it. And the road car never showing its face is honestly what makes the car so unique on track. Whether the road car never saw the light of day was a good thing or a bad thing, what's certain is that doing so turned the HSV into one of the most unique race cars of all time. So when the final NSX rolls off the line next year, don't be surprised if you see a couple of new Hondas running around the Nürburgring. Thank you guys so much for watching Premium Heritage. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And tune in next week when I talk about the 2008 Honda Supra that never existed that ran in NASCAR Le Mans. This is Gerblinda Elite Auto Detailing. They provide best-in-class, full-service interior and exterior detailing, as well as paint protection film to protect your car from rocks and road debris, as well as ceramic coating to protect your car's paint for up to five years. Your Belinda Elite Auto Detailing has been in business for many years and has helped car owners revive their rides. Be sure to schedule an appointment today at www.yourbelindaeliteautodetailing.com.